um, it says, suppose an electron in a hydrogen atom makes this transition. Um, is the wavelength of the emitted photon longer for larger values of n? Oh, so uh, you can see that the way the question is stated, it's uh, looking at the neighboring energy levels. And I believe there's a um, plot in the section that um, gives you a level diagram. Uh, so this is the Bohr's semi-classical model of a hydrogen atom. And while there are corrections that we make to the Bohr model later, one thing that it, is cor it gives correct prediction for is the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. And I uh, think uh, somewhere after introducing Bohr's assumption for the Bohr model, they derive the allowed energy levels. Um, which is given by this. So this is the kind of the baseline, 13.6 AV, and the energy levels quantized by this letter N, principal quantum number, is that minus of that baseline number divided by N squared. So this is the progression. And I hope they have a picture because the just, uh, yeah, this level diagram is the picture that kind of shows you the at an intuitive level, uh, spacing between energy levels uh, of hydrogen atom. So you can see that this is the ground energy, and the next one is fairly high up, you know, that divided by four, that's where this is. And then you can see, oh yeah, uh, so that divided by four, uh, however far that was, it's closer to that divided by three squared to nine. And it's pretty close to that divided by four squared, the 16. So you can see that this spacing gets uh, smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, this N goes all the way up to infinity where energy will be just at zero, just the barely unbound uh, electron atom, uh, sorry, electron uh, to the proton. And uh, at this limit between the neighboring levels, it's basically, it goes to the continuum limit where the spacing of energy levels is infinitesimally small. So for the purpose of this question, uh, for the larger values of n, the energy difference will be smaller. So the photon energy will be smaller for the smaller photon energy, smaller momentum. And <laughs> going back to this De Broglie relationship, which relates the wavelength to the momentum of the photon. So if this momentum is very small, the wavelength will be very large or very long. So the wavelength of the emitted photon is longer for larger values of it. Yeah, and it's shorter for smaller values of it. That's it. Um, so, you know, it's not meant to be a difficult question. And yeah, <laughs> um, multiple choice. Question nine. Oh wait, I think I've done this question. Oh yeah, I think I did this as a number plugging in exercise. So let me skip that. I think question 10, I haven't done. Um, partly because it is kind of similar to this, but let me just do this one from scratch. Um, it says a uh, hydrogen atom makes the transition from the ground state to n equals four state by absorbing a photon. So the mental image I'd like you to have is the image uh, in section uh, 6.4 uh, where you have this level level diagram so this hydrogen atom is starting from this energy level and after absorbing a photon it's going to go to n equals full state uh, it, by, by the way this number might be different depending on randomization for you so it's going to go from uh, this energy to n equals for this energy so let me write it down uh, the the photon is going, uh, the hydrogen atom is going from energy of the ground state or minus 13.6 EV to uh, n equals 4 state, which will be minus 13.6 divided by 4 squared EV. And the energy of the photon that will allow this transition to occur is the uh, energy difference or the higher energy, so that's E4, minus the lower energy, E1. 
So uh, let me just do this calculation on my calculator, SageMath. So energy at level 4 minus 13.6 divided by 4 squared minus minus 13.6. Hopefully it's positive. Positive 12.75 EV. That should be the answer for the energy of the photon. Let me keep going. The frequency of the photon, we use the um, earlier uh, relationship for that was the introduction of the photon that energy of the photon is related to its frequency um, and so the Planck's constant times frequency will give you the um, give you the energy of the photon now in this question so far we've already been using electron volt unit so if I solve this for frequency so energy of the photon divide by Planck's constant and I plug in the unit numbers in the units I have in the unit of electron volt and in the unit of electron volt times second to verify this is Planck's constant then uh, electron volt will cancel out I have one over second that is the unit of Hertz so let me do that um, so let me go to, I think a double underscore is the two previous value. So that's the energy of the photon divided by H, Planck's constant. Yeah, so, oh, this is already in, uh, times 10 to the power of 15. That is already that. So let me just plug in the mantissa, 3.08. 3.08, that's the frequency of the photon. Really high, high enough that there aren't electronic devices that will fully resolve that, uh, you know, it's a visible photo. We know it's above visible. I think this is ultraviolet. Okay, what is the wavelength of the photon? Yeah, that will settle it. So uh, we have the frequency of the photon. So for this last one, we'll use the relationship for waves. We have um, the four waves. The relationship is wave speed is the frequency times the wavelength. So if we want wavelength, solve for wavelength. That's the speed of the wave divided by the frequency. So I already have C programmed in, speed of light. Um, so we'll take C divided by the frequency, which was the two outputs ago. And that's the wavelength in meters. So I want the answer in nanometers. Uh, there are two or one nanometer is 10 to the minus nine meter. So I can take this, multiply it by 10 to the power of 9 to get answer in nanometers. So 97.3 nanometer. Yeah, that's in the UV range. I don't know if that's called a soft UV or hard UV, but that is definitely ultraviolet. So yeah, that's it. It's, uh, um, I guess once you have the Bohr energies, then it's... And they're working through the same relationships that you have seen as we were introducing a semi-classical model of quantum mechanics.